next guest went from the White House to the Big Brother house and managed to make it out of both of them alive. Please welcome Omarosa. Uh, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. You're no stranger to CBS, having just uh, left the Big Brother house. Just 48 hours ago, 48? I um, wow, 48 had not hours seen ago. Sun for an entire month in the Big Brother house. You you trapped in a house with how many other people? There were 10 other people. 10 other people. You don't see Sun for a month. Did that seem crazier or working for the White House? <laughs> I think working for the White House was a little crazier. <laughs> Did, the, did you know the White House was going to be as crazy as it was? Because you've said, you said on Big Brother, like, it's crazy, you know, and we'll get into some details of yeah. what you said, but did, did you think it was going to be smooth sailing? Well, I did. I worked in a, the Clinton White House before. Yep. How well, would you compare them? Well, that one ended in impeachment, so maybe that wasn't a good example. But, but um, they seemed like they knew what they were doing. Now, yeah. did, did, does, did, did, did they <laughs> seem more competent than the people who are in the White House right now? You know, it's, it's each administration is very different. And so the Clinton administration was very different than the Trump administration, but it just got a little crazier every single month. Well, you, you, you said this um, <laughs> on Big Brother when you were asked about what it was like inside the White House. Uh, Jim, you got this? I was haunted by tweets every single day. Like, what is he going to tweet next? Should we be worried? say that because oh. we are worried but I need you to say no it's gonna be okay, okay. no it's gonna not be okay it's not <laughs> that's my first time seeing it <laughs> wow that's, that's the first time you're seeing it yes I've watched it many times Have you? <laughs> I, I see it when my eyes are closed and it haunts me it haunts me at night um, the best so part about being in the house was there was no Twitter for 30 days, and that was the first time that I had been away from Twitter since I joined the campaign in 2015. So it was actually a great reprieve. Okay, so uh, it's not going to be okay. It's not. What, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, you know, um, we. And what, was that a joke? Because you're laughing about it. But he's chilled, and I'm chilled by watching it because you know Donald Trump. You were in the White House, you were close to the events that were happening. What do you mean it's not going to be okay? I'm glad you asked because that was a part of a bigger discussion. We were talking about immigration and roundups. And he, we, particularly we were talking about a family of a, a man who had been in the country for 30 years and had been sent back. Mm -hmm. And um, Ross was expressing his concern about what was happening with immigration. So that was a part of a bigger discussion. And I believe that the immigration debate will continue. And it's, it's a very difficult and complicated subject. And I don't believe that it can be resolved so simply. And that was a part of the discussion. And that's why I was a bit emotional, because what's happening with Haitians, uh, El Salvador, what's happening with a lot of the immigrants who are being put out of this country without giving them the consideration that this nation is a nation of immigrants mm -hmm. and that we should have compassion, particularly with dreamers. And so that, was, that came from a bigger discussion. And I so am So when you concerned. say, don't think that everything's going to be OK, it's, it's not, not going to be OK. Because you mean it's not going to be OK for the DACA kids, it's not going to be OK for immigrants? Or we you have mean an opportunity. For, for the rest of us, we're going to be? You, Stephen, you, you we have an opportunity anything. to make it OK. Uh, <laughs> we have an opportunity to make it OK. And I don't want 15 seconds on a reality show to encapsulate such an, a well, serious I'll topic. Well, I'll ask you again. Is, <laughs> is, it go, is everything going to be OK under Donald Trump? We'll have to wait and see. So yeah, that's not a message of, of <laughs> that is not a message of hope. I want to remind you <laughs> that uh, what 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 you left. What, what, when did you leave the White House? I forget. Uh, my last day was January the twentieth okay. of this year. Last day. And uh, the uh, first reports is that you were you were like let out by security. <laughs> is that true? No, no, not at all. Okay. I, I love the dramatic, you know, everybody talks about me going on reality TV, but I mean, the way they describe this 
White House, it sounds more reality TV-ish. Um, but no, and there were reports about um, me being in a, a Christmas party with 600 people and alarms going off. And, you know, and that people were upset that you had people, all your bridesmaids come in. That my bridesmaids photos. came and all of that. Um, Is that no, true? It was, were they it, upset it was, that that happened? It was less sexy than that. You know, I, I committed to doing a year mm -hmm. with this administration. We started January the 20th of last year. Yeah. And this would have been one year. Okay. It, it's, it's as simple as that. So I'd like quit, to make you, it as dramatic as it would be on a reality TV show, but it's just as simple as that. So had you a conversation quit on your own accord. No one with, fired you. I had a conversation with John Kelly. And, Is that a nice conversation? Because he seems well, like he's a very a little, stern man. <laughs> I had a conversation with him. We were restructuring the Office of Public Liaison. And, um, you know, I thought that was a good time for me to leave. And we sorted out when I would leave January 20th seemed to make sense. Sure. The rest of it really came from just hype and hyperbole and the other drama, but it was as simple as that, as a conversation with General Kelly. And he's a four-star general. You don't have to go beyond that. Yeah. He's no longer a four-star general. He's the chief of staff. He doesn't yes. have a uniform or anything anymore, does he? Well, he still has that title for the rest of his life. When okay. you serve this nation in uh -huh. that position, you get to be called a yeah, four-star Yeah, I just couldn't general. remember whether he had actually resigned his commission before he took the job. Wow, you're getting really deep. I don't know. I no, I'm, I'm just curious. <laughs> Maybe I'm someone curious. in the audience knows. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know. Do you um, all know? So, so, why'd you, so why did you quit? Um, like I said, I committed to doing one year. So and just, I think just one, year? one year in the Trump White House is more than enough for me. This is my... <laughs> Was it a good, how about this? Was it a good experience? Was it a good experience? Serving your country is an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to serve my country 20 years ago in the Clinton White House. And this was a wonderful opportunity to do that again. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important with the issues that are happening to have a voice at the table that hopefully represents the diverse voices of this country. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you worked is this for mine? Hope. Oh, absolutely, sure. Thank you. Did you, you, Did you work... drink out of this? I, I didn't. No, I don't no, no. I drink, okay. uh, I drink oh. rum. Um, <laughs> the, this is your, may I show this? This is your own photo. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Hope I think this is your personal photo right here. This is you and Hope Hicks yeah. in, in Happier Days. We're, now, we're in Youngstown, Ohio, which is where I'm from, and the president went there last year. Was this during the campaign or after the election? No, that's in the White House. We took Air Force One, flew to Youngstown, and did a big old rally in my hometown. Now, she uh, announced that she's resigning today, uh, one day after uh, she told congressional investigators that she sometimes tells white lies for Donald Trump. Are, can you, you worked for her. Do you know what the lies were? <laughs> I would suspect the first big one might be about crowd size, but I don't want to really go into it. <laughs> uh, oh, no, can, let's, no, please, let's can, go into it. No, please, let's go into it. Do you... People, <laughs> we gotta give the people, the people wanna know. <laughs> you worked in the, in the Office of Communications. Let's communicate how big Let's the crowd communicate. was. Let's yeah. communicate, yeah. You know, I got to attend the inauguration of Bill Clinton, Bush, Obama, and when we got to the Trump uh, inauguration and they said this was the largest crowd size, I'm like, man, I've been to a lot of inaugurations. This wasn't the biggest crowd size, but I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be the one to break it to them. Is that why you had <laughs> I want to be that person. Who has to break? <laughs> who has to break things to Donald Trump that he doesn't want to hear? And uh, <laughs> do they wear a cup? <laughs> well, well, like who, whose job? Is, who can say things to the president he doesn't want to hear? Because he sounds like he seems like someone who only wants to hear what he wants to hear. Well, at the time it was um, Rain Priebus and then Spicer, but again, both of them are no longer there. Yeah. So. Are you going to go live <laughs> with them? Is that where you're moving in with those two guys? <laughs> No, you know, I actually live with my very handsome husband. I'm a newlywed. Congratulations. Uh, yes, and I'm looking forward to... Um, <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to getting back home. I was away from him for a month. Now, Jared Kushner um, has had his uh, security clearance uh, downgraded from top secret to secret. Uh, <laughs> can I ask what your, your clearance was? A secret. It was secret, yes. okay. What, what does that mean in the White House uh, to have your clearance downgraded? Do you have any sense of that, how that will affect his job? It's very fascinating. I, I again, worked in two administrations that never heard of someone's classification who works that close to the president, mm -hmm. downgraded mm -hmm. um, and not revoked. So that was, that's a very interesting turn. You can't events. entirely revoke him. He still is the son-in-law of the president. He still has... <laughs> He still has that office. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that makes it complicated because you know if they're talking at dinner, 
And if the president wants to talk with him about top secret things, what is he really going to say? Pass me the mashed potatoes and I can't discuss that because my security clearance has been downgraded. It's a very complicated situation. Well, as soon as the president says it, it is <laughs> automatically declassified. The president gets to say what's classified or not. So right. I guess his clearance doesn't matter. Well, no, it really does matter. And the issues that he works on are... I mean, it, does, uh, it doesn't stop him from learning things. It doesn't stop him, about. yes. And, and he works on a lot of very important issues. And so I'm watching this very closely. I'm sure the nation is watching it very closely. We want to make sure that we are guarding our national security secrets mm -hmm. from the enemy. So. Yeah, I would, I'm, I'm watching it very closely, and um, <laughs> and and I I, wor I worry, you know, I don't think it's any secret that I I don't have the greatest trust in, in our leadership right now. You don't? And I don't. I don't have a lot of trust. <laughs> but do do you? Because you have said. <laughs> you you. I mean, you have uh, you have said we like we said as that we should be worried. You were haunted by the tweets. What was it about the tweets that haunted you? What, was, what, what surprised you? Because there are a lot of things were said while you were there. What is it about the tweets that specifically haunted you? You know, he announced major policy um, issues on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, the transgender ban, for instance, yeah. was announced on Twitter. I, I, remember. I don't know that that's, you know, for someone who's in communications uh, like Hope and myself, you know, that's not a place you want to find out at five in the morning about something that would impact so many people's lives. You want to find out in a policy briefing from the mm -hmm. director of domestic policy mm -hmm. about those issues and, um, you know, the subsequent follow-up for it, not, not on Twitter. So does that affect your opinion of Donald Trump? Does that make you doubt whether he should be the most powerful man in the world? Look, Donald Trump was my, it, it was my friend for 15 years. Uh, he fired you four times. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's landed me here on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, so it's, I'm doing okay. <laughs> um, but he, he was my friend, and watching him in this position, you know, has caused me to, you know, be excited sometimes and sometimes be very, very concerned. And I think if your best friend, if you woke up and your best friend was president tomorrow, you'd have the, that same range of emotions. If my best friend was president tomorrow, I'd feel better. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> because she is way smarter than I am. Now, now uh, let's see what else is going on here. Um, you said this uh, when How Donald Trump clips? was first elected. This is like the greatest hits. Omarosa, greatest hits. <laughs> okay, oh yeah, I don't know when I'll get a chance to talk to Omarosa again. <laughs> By the way, I apologize for mispronouncing your name. I've been calling you Omarosa ever since I heard your name. Well, uh, it's Omarosa. Omarosa, hard O. Hard O, like o. Obama. Obama, Oprah. Yeah. Most African names are O, hard O. Oh yeah, yes. Opie. <laughs> Okay, right after the, you I'm said gonna this. You okay, I'm going to give you, you that one. I'm going to give you that one. You said, you said, you, uh, uh, you said, um, in, I think it might have been in December, you said, uh, when asked, you said, Donald Trump is racial, not racist. Um, uh, how sharp was the razor you needed to split that hair? <laughs> and and what, do you, what do you mean by that? What do you mean racial, but not racist? You know, I, um... <laughs> Boy, I caught so much heat for that comment. Uh, my, my bachelor's degree is in communication. My master's, my doctoral studies are in communication. And so that's an academic argument that should have not taken place on, on uh, morning television. Well, whatever it the argument is, I'm just curious what it is. Let me set this up. Well, OK. It should have been a discussion. Blue? I did. I'm honored. <laughs> I did. It should have been a discussion that took place where it could be a, an expanded discussion because I don't want to trivialize some of the things that have happened in this administration or some of the things that he has done. Um, he is a racial person. The things that happens when he talks about Mexicans or when Charlottesville happened, those are racially charged issues. The moment we smack the label of racist on someone, the discussion stops. 
you're, if, if I say you're a racist, the person doesn't want to come to the table and learn why you have been put in this predicament, why you put folks in that predicament and how you should learn and how you should reverse those ways that are very decisive and troubling. So isn't that I don't want to defining, split. isn't that a way of defining racist out of existence? No, no, because no, 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 no. Racist ever... and racism is real in this country. Okay. And some of the things I talked about and I, that I talked about in terms of being troubling are things that certainly would fall into those categories. But on a late night show or a morning show where you only have five minutes to discuss those issues does not give you enough time to dive into the depth of the pain that minorities have experienced in this country. And so I never want to trivialize that because it's quite serious. And so I'm not splitting hairs. It's just so that we need, to have, we need to have a bigger discussion and particularly in the context of this administration where so many things have happened that have been racial and, and people have defined it as racist, there's a bigger discussion that needs to happen. That's all so I'm saying. There, a lot of things have happened. Let me just read a few things that have happened and you just, <laughs> just maybe just raise your hand if, raise your hand if you think he shouldn't have done them. Well, I should start now because most of them he okay. shouldn't have done. So things that, things that you, uh, that maybe in retrospect he goes, maybe I should have left when that happened. Okay, <laughs> uh, grab him by the pussy. <laughs> That's before we, we in, went into. Are, are you all raising your hands? I see a whole bunch of raising. Their hands. So <laughs> the whole were, audience raised their hands. But you worked hands. for him. You worked for the campaign. So, so I'm glad you asked about that because um, at the time that that happened, we were on a woman's tour. I was traveling with his daughter-in-law uh -huh. in North Carolina, and it was it was like a, a gut punch. It was probably one lower. of the most extra. <laughs> extra <laughs> How about Charlottesville? How about Charlottesville? <laughs> Blame on both sides. Find people on both sides. Keep reading the whole list and I'll give you the assessment. Defend Roy Moore. Mexicans as rapists. Fighting with a Gold Star family. Attacking John McCain for being a POW. Picking a fight with John Lewis. Throwing paper towels at hurricane victims of Puerto Rico. The Muslim <laughs> ban. And attacking U.S. federal judge Curiel for being Mexican. Awful, awful, unacceptable, unacceptable, awful, 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 awful. Unacceptable, unequivocally unacceptable. And I'd like Awful. to work for that man. <laughs> no, I Put don't work for him anymore. <laughs> no, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't work for him, nor do I regret trying to be a voice of reason at the table. But you said, and, you said and, on and Big Brother as well. And try to be well, the change. You also said leaving the White House felt like freed from a plantation. <laughs> you said this. I didn't, yeah. you said this, what, what does that mean? That has certainly disturbing resonance for me and I'm not an African American. What, what does that mean for you? You know, uh, the, the White House that I worked in, that Trump administration was, it was troubling. And it was, it was very difficult. And my analogy of it being a plantation, being an ecosystem of work where people feel oppressed is pretty clear. Um, when you aren't allowed to do the job you were brought to, be, to do to help be a change agent, to help be the liaison for communities that needed that assistance. That's where that oppression comes from, and that's what that analogy meant, Stephen. So it was everyone there would feel that way, is what you're saying, as if long they as they were, were not allowed were to do their job. If they were an African-American woman, they may have. I was speaking for myself. I can't speak for everyone in the White House. I was speaking for how I felt as the only African-American senior advisor to President Donald Trump. Okay. Well, what, what's next? Now that you've done Big Brother, you've done the White House, what, <laughs> what, how, in what ways do you hope to be a change agent now? Well, I'm going to continue doing the work that my husband, Pastor John Allen Newman, and I do at the Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. I'm going to focus on my ministry because my calling to, to the ministry is more important than anything else that I've done, and I don't want to neglect it. Well, I want, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for uh, talking to us about your time at the White House because it, it is important. It is troubling. People are worried. that They are afraid things aren't going to be okay. Um, uh, thanks for answering my questions, and I want to offer you uh, a little gift Thin if you mints. accept these Thin Mints from <laughs> yes, me. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Omarosa, everybody.